In this video then, we're going to be building a Twitter bot that performs sentiment analysis on any mentions that it receives. So we're gonna take a look at how this works, and then we're going to have a look at some of the services that we're going to be using to pull all this together. Now, this isn't a production ready version. It would still work and it's perfectly acceptable to use this, but I would recommend you check out the Laravel version of this series that we have if you want to pull this together and build your own bot. So uh, let's see how this works. Now, I have a Twitter account already set up just here called Code Course Bot. And if I just tweet it, you can see I've been playing around with it here. I am very happy, for example. We go ahead and tweet that. Now, what's going to happen when we refresh this page is the first thing is we're going to come over and use the uh, mentions timeline part of the Twitter API. This will pull back all mentions. And then we're going to hit a service called Monkey Learn, which we'll talk more about uh, throughout this series. But essentially, this will allow us to send text off for sentiment analysis as part of one of their modules. But we'll, like I said, explore that later. So when I refresh, the first thing that's going to happen is we're actually checking a database of things we've already mentioned because we don't want to repeatedly uh, reply to people. That would be pretty annoying. And once that's done, you can see here that if I just check out this tweet, we have uh, a reply. So a happy face just here. And it works exactly the same with, the, with being sad. So uh, it rained today, for example. So something a little bit more complex. If we go ahead and reply, refresh here. And if we come over, you can see that this has a kind of neutral face. So uh, let's get started with this. We're going to be doing this all on one page just so we can get to grips with it. Like I said, check out the Laravel version if you really want a, a nice way to build this. But let's start from scratch and build this up. So the first thing that you'll want to do is set up a Twitter account to test this out. Now, of course, you don't need to. You can use your own account, but sometimes it's just nice to have a separate account to test these out. So what we're going to be doing then with Twitter is setting up an app. So if you come over to dev.twitter.com, once you have your account or if you're using your own account, you want to come over here and you want to just scroll down just to here to manage your apps. So apps.twitter.com. So we're going to create an app which will allow us to authenticate with the API. And this will, of course, allow us to basically take any mentions that we receive and then act on them. So let's create a new app and we'll see uh, what we need to do here. So we can say something like code course scented bot. These have to be unique names, so you probably won't get the name that you want. Uh, and I'm just going to say a uh, sentiment analysis bot. And we can go and just enter any website here. So codecourse.com in this case. So we don't need a callback URL. And we just want to make sure that we read and agree to the uh, terms and conditions here. And once we have created this, we will get our uh, consumer key. And we will also get a secret key as well just here. And what we're also going to need to do is create an access token. Because what we're not doing is authenticating with this app. There's no need to do that. We're not signing in or anything like that. All we need is an access token so we can start to use the API, send tweets and receive tweets. So now that we have our account set up, we're going to use a dependency called Codebird, which is a really nice way just to interact with the Twitter API. Doing this without a dependency is just more messy than it probably needs to be. So I have in my text editor an empty file ready to go. And the first thing that we want to do is just pull down this code bird dependency and then see if we can grab all of the mentions and we can obviously test this out. So if we just go over to Composer, if you don't have Composer already, go ahead and download this. I'm going to be using this to install uh, Codebird PHP. So what we want to do then is over in the terminal, we want to make sure that we're within the directory we're working in and run a Composer require on this and just wait for this to download. So now that's done, we can head over to index.php. We obviously have a composer.json file created for us and we have all of our dependencies in our vendor folder. And we just want to require in vendor autoload and we are good to go. So up here, let's just use code bird, code bird. That's the dependency. And here we are going to set our consumer key. So we just say code bird. We have a set consumer 
key static method. And into this, we need to pass in two arguments. And if we just head over to the app that we created, it's this just here, like so, and it's this one just here as well. So we're just gonna paste this in like so. So now we have our consumer key set. We just want to grab the instance of Codebird that we're gonna use. So get instance. And just down here, we want to change the return format uh, when we actually hit the API. So by default, this will be an object, but we want to change this uh, to be a array or an array. So we're gonna say set return format on Codebird. And in here, we just give the uh, Codebird return format array global just like that now the other thing that we need to do is set an access token because we're not authenticating with the app like i said earlier we need to manually pass this in so we're then automatically authenticated and we can start uh, using mentions or tweeting anything like that so to do this we use our codebird instance and we set our token just on here and again this takes two arguments we have our access token just in there and then we have our access token secret. So we can just grab that in there like so. So now we are fully authenticated with Twitter and we can actually start to grab mentions. So to do this with Codebird, it's pretty straightforward. We just say mentions and we're gonna use Codebird to grab the statuses and we use mentions timeline like so. Now, the way this works within Codebird, if you just come down to the GitHub page, when we map the API method to function calls, we basically just take it and then we give uh, like a camel case like this. So if we come over here, we've got statuses, mentions, timeline, we get rid of the underscore and T becomes uppercase. So that's pretty much uh, how we do that with Codebird. Now, there's a really important argument we need to pass into the mentions timeline, and that is the last ID. Now, I already have my database set up. We're going to go through this uh, in a bit, but this will basically just keep track of all of the items that we've already uh, replied to. The reason being is we don't want to grab any mentions that we've already replied to. That would be silly. We would just keep repeatedly uh, replying to people then. So into here, we will eventually pass in that last ID when we hit our database to grab this back. So we can now just test out uh, the mentions. So let's just do a var dump on this and we can kill the page or not. Head over to our browser, hit refresh, and we should see here uh, a load of mentions. Now it's really important to note this will return the 20 most recent mentions. So what we're actually going to be doing eventually is running this every 20 minutes. If you were to set up a cron to handle this, it would run every, uh, let's say 15 minutes. This would also get around Twitter's rate limiting as well, because this endpoint is rate limited. So you get 15 requests every 15 minutes. So if we run this every 15 minutes, that's more than enough uh, to uh, get around this. We don't need to reply instantly, um, and you could probably tweak this to make it a little bit better uh, as well in terms of the timing. So now that we have our mentions, the first thing that we want to do is just check if we actually have any mentions. And to do this, we can just say, well, is the first key set here? So you can see we've got an array of 22 items and we have uh, the first key here. Now, the reason that we have 22 items is if we go down to the bottom, you can see that we get an HTTP status which is obviously 200, this has worked. And we also have a rate as well. So you can see here that we have a remaining limit, which is now 14, and we have a limit. This will reset after 15 minutes. So if this is not set, we just want to return. Now, obviously this isn't, isn't ideal because it's on a single page, but like I said, if you follow the uh, Laravel version, this is uh, gonna be a lot better. So now that we have our list of mentions, what we need to do is go through them and create an array of tweets that we can actually do something with. So we essentially just want to extract out the data here that we need because there's lots of information here that we really don't need. So to do this, I'm just going to create an empty tweets array and I'm going to go through each of the mentions. So I'm going to give these an index like so. Now for each loop here, mention will be each one of them tweets, but we have a slight problem in the fact that it will also include 
the HTTP status and the rate. So to get around this, we just want to say if is set mention ID. This will give us a good enough indication the fact that if the ID is set here, then we know that this is a tweet. Otherwise, we know it's probably not a tweet. So we have that if statement in there just to make sure we're only looping through tweets or at least we're only doing something with tweets. So what we can now do is append to that tweets array that we created up here. And what we need are the ID. So we want to grab the mention ID. We also need the user's screen name. So let's say user screen name and we'll go and grab this from user and then it's just screen name. So that's just here. We scroll up a little bit. We've got user and then we've got screen name. This will allow us to obviously reply to that person. And obviously we need the text because we need to perform a uh, sentiment analysis on this text. So we just go ahead and pull that back like that. So now if we do a var dump on the tweets that we've got, we should see the following. So this is a little bit nicer. We can use the ID to store this once we've replied. And of course we can use the text to perform sentiment analysis and then the screen name to at the user in a tweet uh, to reply to them. So what we now need to do is only extract the text because we're going to be sending this off to monkey learn for analysis and monkey learn will allow you to send off a collection of text which will then be analyzed and then will be returned and we'll see how that will work in just a minute but to do this we just want to say something like tweet text and then use array map to go through this tweets array and then only pull back the text so to do this, we just have a closure just in here. For the second argument, it's the array that we want to map through. And then inside of here, we get a tweet. So to do this, we just return tweet text. And if we just do a var dump on the tweet text, we now should have just a list of the text. So we can send this off to monkey learn, and this will give us back uh, an indexed array of the result for each one. So say this would be neutral, this would be uh, positive, this would be negative, and monkey learn will return all that information to us. So now that we have our mentions back and we've extracted out the tweet text, we're going to go on to the next part where we're going to look at getting monkey learn set up, learn about what monkey learn does and how we use it. And then we will actually start to perform the sentiment analysis, which will put us in a good position to reply to that user based on their tweet.